What is going on YouTube? This is Jim back with another unboxing video. It's been a long time since we've had a decent collector's edition that I felt would merit an unboxing video. So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Horizon Forbidden West collector's edition. Now there were, I think, two different editions and it had to do with the actual statue that you got. This is the cheaper of the two. I haven't opened it yet, even though the box is seemingly ready to burst at the seams. Um, my wife, I actually had her pick. I said, which one do you want to get? And she said she liked the armor on this one more than the armor on the other one. And I said, okay, so that's what we ended up doing was um, getting this edition. I want to say it was like 160, 170 bucks. As you guys know, when it comes to these collector edition videos, I am incredibly prepared. So fear not, but I thought it'd be fun because we haven't done one in a while. So pretty large box. I picked it up at Best Buy the other day. It still came in the uh, actual cardboard crate. So um, when I got home, I was looking at a giant cardboard box and then inside of that was this box. And guess what's inside this box? If you guessed another box, well, you would be correct. Let's go ahead and pull this sucker out so I can show you guys. Jeez, just how massive this thing is. A box and a box and a box. Uh, PlayStation definitely doesn't pull any punches when it comes to decent collector editions. And something that I have noticed over the years is their packaging is exceptional. I have yet to get a collector's edition from them that has been damaged only because they, <laughs> they do such a good job and I'm glad they took such care to put a box in a box because back in the day I used to display the boxes before I got a zillion collector editions. I don't even have room for the statues, let alone all the artwork that they display. But Horizon Forbidden West definitely is a game that I was really, really looking forward to. Um, I loved the first Horizon. I thought it was an exceptional game. It was the first game I ever played that had, um, does this come up or off? Or how does this, it's always a mystery. It was the first game I ever played that had HDR. So actually we bought our new Sony TV and we got into playing, yeah, it does slide, it's supposed to slide up, there we go. First game I ever got that had HDR. We got a brand new Sony TV at the time and super excited to play through this entirely. And man, it was an absolute treat. I platinumed it. I got all the collectors, you know, the special armor at the end of the game. I was so excited to finally get my hands on the sequel, which I see has been getting some really good reviews and I can't wait to dive into it myself. These guys do not mess around, like I said, with packing. There is a lot here, but you want to keep your stuff nice, especially when you're paying premium price for a collector's edition. So. This collector's edition comes with, like I said, one of the two statues. We're going to go ahead and take a look at that in just a moment. I don't know what else is actually included in here. I'm assuming it's at the tray at the bottom. Uh, looks like we have a uh, barcode <laughs> that you could scan <laughs> to go to the website, I guess, to show you how to assemble the statue. And yes, there is going to be assembly required. It looks like there are five or six different parts that go together. We're going to do all this together uh, in one take. I may mute it a few times depending on how obnoxious I get with the crinkling and the packaging, but let's go ahead and take the rest of this out. Now, one of the things you will notice is that the box itself does serve as a sort of diorama should you choose to display it inside the box. That might be something worth considering actually let me put it over here so the camera doesn't mess up our focus as we go through all this together um, but that may be something worth considering if you were looking at getting this a nice way to display it first and foremost we have a uh, steel book case you can see there it looks pretty nice um, there's some codes on the inside and you'll notice one of the things that's missing is the game and that was something that I talked a lot about when I did my early review of the collector's edition. It doesn't come with a physical copy of the disc, which I think is a huge, huge, huge oversight. Um, here is a code for the digital content, which includes extras in photo mode, such as a special pose and face paint, Apex Claw Strider machine strike piece, a resources pack, a digital soundtrack, a digital comic book, and a couple exclusive outfits there. Um, if I accidentally flash the code, 
Don't worry, it's already been redeemed. Um, here we have the actual copy of the game. This is the full game for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 with a voucher on the back. And lastly, we have a Nora Legacy outfit and a Nora Legacy spear. So lots of little goodies and stuff in there to uncover. We also have what appears to be an art book, which I've been hot and cold on, depending on what mood I'm in. I have started drawing creatively quite a bit. I do sit here with my iPad and I try to draw digital things the best I can. It's always nice to have some inspiration. In terms of an art book though, this is a very, very, very small, small art book. Not many pages at all. It's got a few photos that I'm just kind of glossing through that just show some of the concept art of the characters and the locations. It looks like it's about 48 pages. Um, nothing really exciting to see here. I don't think I'll get much inspiration off of this from a digital perspective, but the packaging is nice. I'll give it that. Um, I don't think there's anything else. And we'll check the full inventory on the back of the box at the end, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, because I've done that before. If you remember some collector's editions, I was really frustrated because I thought I was missing something and it turns out it was in the packaging. And that happened a couple times. I remember for honor, I actually threw away the actual game. <laughs> so <laughs> I say throw away lightly because it was just lying on top of the garbage can, but I did in fact absolutely toss the game. So uh, I will be very, very careful here. So we're gonna make a little bit of noise as we pull out all of these pieces of this incredibly complex detailed statue. And then we'll go ahead and take a look at it together and determine if it's worth your money. Because I have seen this actually come back in stock uh, in a couple places, which is really, really nice. I know this sold out almost instantly. A lot of people wrote into my channel and said, oh, I wish I had subscribed to you earlier, but I didn't know that this was coming out. And this was one of those things that they announced it during a state of play. It went on sale shortly thereafter that, and it sold out shortly thereafter that. Um, Holy smokes, who's gonna get this thing out? Jesus, okay. And lastly, we have an Aloy figure, which looks to be taped. Let me go ahead and get that out. Yeah, this is, um, listen, I, I'm, I'm all for the packaging. It, it's a little pain in the butt in terms of unboxing, especially if you're low-tech gym like me and you're just trying to get by. But I will say that um, ultimately, try to set this down so it doesn't slam. Um, ultimately, I am glad they take their time to put this thing together with care because it is a nice piece. And I mean, I'm just looking at how massive it is uh, as we pull away the, uh, the humidity bag here before I put on even any of the other things. This is insane. This appears, I mean, it's heavy. It's very heavy. This is along the lines of my Shadow of the Colossus statue, I think in terms of just a display piece that really draws attention to the room. So it looks like they gave us some pieces that are supposed to be maybe color coded and it does not appear to be the case. It's up to us brave people to figure out how these pieces actually slide in via a, a method of like a Tetris. Believe it or not, actually looking at this, maybe mine is broken. The arm does move. It's actually held up in the air and the arm has a small amount of play. I don't think that was by design. It could have been. I don't see anything here where they talk about the rotations of it, but okay, let's see if we can put this together. So uh, we have pieces that have uh, orange. There's an orange circle I'm looking for here. Let's see if we could, f oh, there's a dot on the inside. These guys think of everything. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick this up, but on the inside of this circle down here, there is a green dot. Over here is a red dot. I'm noticing a pattern here. Over here is an orange uh, tip on the end. We have a yellow tip and we have a no tip, but I assume you know that the tail most likely goes in the back. So now it's just a matter of finding and plugging all of these things in and making sure I plug them in correctly so that his tail is not upside down. It looks like it only goes in one way, which is good because I suspect many of us would probably do an incorrect thing. So that's actually the back. This is the front. <laughs> it goes like this. It's, a, it's not a tail. It's part of the elephant trunk. Duh. All right, so that snaps in pretty easily. I will say that there are a lot of loose pieces here. Uh, the elephant tusks in particular in the front definitely have some play to them. I don't think that's by design. This definitely isn't meant to be posed 
or sculpted. Um, so I, I think that I'm not going to say there's a suspect in worksmanship here. Um, I will just say that I think it's important to know as you're putting yours together, should you have elected to spend an insane amount of money like I have on buying this, um, I think it's important to know that you may have some light play in your figure um, and that may be something you weren't really expecting. All right, so we have, <laughs> my goodness. So the statue itself has uh, different color tips on it, like I said, that kind of help you determine where each of the figures go. Um, this is really complex. This is really complex. This, this is a lot more complex than I thought it would be. Um, I see here where there's like a green tip on the end of the figure and there is a reset recess piece. I guess it just lays loosely in there. That doesn't seem quite right to me. I feel like there should be more of a bite here on this on this actual thing, but maybe not. Uh, maybe it's just supposed to lay loosely on the fitted plastic. It doesn't seem like it's a good fit though, which this is definitely the right connection. So what I'm looking at here on the end is you have, uh, actually let me hold it up to the camera so you can see. I already put the tusk in, but you could see on each side here and over here, you can see the camera picking up those colors. They're uh, pieces of the elephant's tusks that come out and they're, pretty massive and heavy. Actually, all these pieces are very heavy. They have a piece of plastic on the end with different color tips that looks like it's some sort of ball joint that sets into this. And there's a green in the green where it's supposed to set loosely onto here, but it doesn't seem like it's a very good connection. I'm actually gonna try the other side just to see if this is an error or not. Um, I have had collector editions in the past that I have gotten that I have thought been designed very poorly and they have fallen apart. Um, the Sekiro Shadows Die Twice is a perfect example of a guy that just can't hold his sword to save his life. And it's incredibly infuriating that I spent that much money on something that just doesn't really sit well. Uh, this one is loose, but it is staying on. And I think it has to do with the fact that it's at an angle. So you do have a tusk that's kind of at an angle where the, pe the ball joint sits in. It's not any kind of notch plastic or any kind of hook it's just a, a square piece of plastic and a ball that just kind of lays loosely on top of it. Doesn't seem to be very uh, sturdy. I wonder if this is something that's gonna require some sort of glue to kind of assemble this to make it a little more ruggedized because I have a feeling that in light transport, which for me is gonna be uh, going up the stairs here in like half an hour, this is not gonna stay on well. And, and I'll, I'll look and see, I, I'm gonna scan that barcode here in a moment if it's something I'm missing. This is absolutely the way it's supposed to go on. Uh, looking at it now symmetrically, let me get a little closer so you can see. Uh, looking at it symmetrically, see? <laughs> it's supposed to stay on, it doesn't very well. So let me do a quick jump cut. Let me Google this website to see if there is some sort of glue or something they recommend, but uh, putting it together definitely is something that uh, seems to be a bit of a challenge. So with a quick snap of the fingers, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Um, I wanna show this really quickly. Um, if you go to this URL in the manual, it doesn't work. <laughs> this URL will take you to nothing that exists. You have to scan this QR code. It will take you to an unlisted YouTube video where you can get instructions, which is basically just the dude assembling it with some uh, instrumental music. I'll post a link to that in the description below in case you want to check it out. I don't know why, but here's what I wanted to show you. You see all these color coded things. You got color coded tips and color coded holes where everything needs to go. It's not bad. The problem I made, and I guess I should have followed the instructions, right? You know, me being a typical engineer, knowing everything was that you need to put in the, the, the tusks first. Uh, if you don't do that, what ends up happening is you have to grab onto uh, you have to grab onto this really hard and it's on now. I mean, I'm wiggling, I'm shaking it. This thing ain't moving. Um, you have to grab onto it really hard because it's a little, what is that a little thread? Uh, the, where the tusk is, you have to hold that with one hand and you have to push these two things in with these ball joints. They're very, very tight, very tight. Um, my fingertips were sore and I was smashing it together. I was getting ready to go get a pair of pliers, but it does make an audible click on both of these bigger tusk pieces here. Once you get these smaller ones, they just lay on a little looser, but they, they're still pretty tight. Like I said, I'm, I'm horsing this thing, wiggling it, it ain't moving no more. 
and then the tusk you saw me already it slides on so let's go ahead and take a look at this thing together and then we'll look at the alloy figure and give you a sense of scale so one of the beautiful things about horizon zero dawn is the sense of scale when you're fighting these larger than life monsters getting into these insane battles this thing is huge giant elephant with a huge robotic tusk and these like tractor kind of claws on the outside you know as part of its tusk and its trunk very very massive frontal like presence here it's walking clearly that's why this one foot is kind of it shouldn't be loose honestly it's just a set piece of plastic i could see where you could actually pop this arm off i don't know why you'd want to um, it's not meant to move and it won't move when it's just displayed. It'll most likely rest here because of gravity. Um, and it, it's, you know, it's like it's in motion kind of thing. On the back, you have a bunch of these uh, spikes. Um, they're just loose pieces of plastic. It looks like they can be bent loosely if you're not happy with the placement of them. Like in my case, for whatever reason, one of them is slightly bent, but just in bending it slightly with my hand, I was able to kind of fix where it needs to be. Um, I wanted to highlight the base a little bit here to show you the base is beautiful. Uh, it's a snow covered uh, rock with some leaves. You could see a giant footprint where the, this uh, machine was walking. Um, no nonsense on the bottom in terms of Horizon Zero Dawn or any of that. It's just a nice clean base. Gives it a big sense of scale, but I think what really gives it a big sense of scale is you get an Aloy figure with the here and you have Aloy standing there. Uh, also a little bit of runoff plastic. You can see where it came right off the 3D printer. No joke, uh, very interesting. Let's go ahead and get a close up of her so you could take a look. Hopefully my camera is doing this justice. Uh, there's actually a small piece of ribbon, a thread rather, uh, right here on her bow and arrow. It's actually a piece of thread. Uh, she's got her arrows on her hip there. Um, really nice mold of her in an action scene. And when you put it together, pretty convincing how tiny she is compared to this monster to give you a sense of the scale in the game, it's definitely meant to be displayed as them facing off to each other and rivals, no doubt about it. It wouldn't be something she'd be like, let's go into battle. It's definitely meant for as a display piece for this to be off over to the side a little bit. Um, I think where they could have maybe made a little bit of improvement is if the base extended out and she snapped into the base because you're gonna have this white snow, then table, then her base kind of, uh, seemingly off to the side but this is a beautiful piece if you are a fan of horizon zero dawn installation instructions inside i think this is a highly recommended piece uh, lots of detail i remember blowing up these canisters and uh, collecting some of the parts back in the old one as i was fabricating different pieces of gear you have all these machines on the top looks like different types of guns you have all these spikes and this thing is very you know weaponized ready for combat um, and it's a very menacing looking thing and it's massive. It's heavy. This is a very heavy piece. I would argue this is probably the heaviest collector edition I own with the exception of the For Honor metal helmets where I have the three individual helmets. Uh, obviously it's a little bigger than that, but it is absolutely massive and I love it. Um, I think you're gonna struggle with the installation, okay? I think you're gonna struggle with putting this thing together because this is tight. This is something that I don't like. If they're gonna do connected pieces like this, where you have plastic snapping into pieces of plastic, like on the tusk and on the horn pieces in the front here, they need to be cut better. This was very clearly just manufactured, obviously not handmade or loving with care. It's that cheap plastic that you get in every collector edition. But when you're taking uh, two pieces of plastic and trying to you know, horse them together so they snap into place, this should be a significantly less amount of insertion force than it is. This probably should have been redesigned in a different way. But now that it's assembled, it will never be unassembled unless I move, uh, which will be a chore of itself. Um, and thankfully, all of the other stuff that is included in it did not have to be assembled. There was no assembly required. And honestly, that's how collector edition should be, right? We shouldn't have to spend time putting everything together and assembling it. We should just enjoy it. But this is cool. I'm going to have to find a place for this somewhere in the front. I already have a really nice Aloy statue, uh, which is about the same size, but definitely not the girth and heft of this. Um, this is uh, going to be great up in anybody's game room of a collection. Now, let's again review real quickly everything that we got. Uh, you got all of these codes, like I said, for different pieces of gear. Um, you know, all the different DLC, a copy of the game, a comic book, a digital soundtrack. You got all of these things here. 
Uh, they gave you an art book, which to me is a throwaway in this case. I don't find this art book of any real value added personally. It's kind of cheap. Uh, it's very small and it doesn't really seem to offer a lot in the way of the experience. And then you have the really, really cool steel book, which I love, although when you go to open it and show your friends, there will be nothing to show. So I guess you could put an empty steel book on your collector shelf if you want. I collect steel books. So I usually like to have games in my steel books, but that's okay. Um, I give this a, a 10 out of 10. I don't give it ratings. I think it's fun. I love it. I bought it for this. I'm happy for this. This is what I wanted. This is what I got. Uh, if you can find this and you are interested in it, just be warned. You may want to have some help putting together this, this front assembly because it was challenging. But now that I'm looking at it and admiring it, I am in love. You can't see my hair. You can see my face and I'm smiling. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care of yourselves. And until next time, I will see you guys on the other side.